Hello again, it's Elizabeth from BB's Butterfly and today uh, I want to do a redo of Waste Not Wednesday because my Waste Not Wednesday video totally destroyed. Total and utter destruction. So today we're going to remake that video and um, what you're going to need or what I'm going to make are um, artist trading trading cards. So I'm going to take my tape pull from my last video and use it up in order to create my artist trading cards. And what we're going to be using today is a piece of a Cheerios box. Um, see Cheerios. What I did is I just cut the back side off of the Cheerios box and yes it has coupons but they're all expired so better use them up and what we're going to do first is get out our gesso and we're going to cover it in gesso and the reason I'm going to cover it is just to give um, you don't have to cover it but I am just, but it's just going to give my um, tape pull something to adhere to but I think actually what I'm going to do first is go ahead and measure out the cards so that I have something smaller to work with. And the size of the cards should be two and a half by three and a half. So I'm going to get out my ruler and I'm just going to measure this out. And this is um, a quilting ruler because I do a lot of quilting. So there's a quarter inch seam allowance built into the ruler. So I have to allow for that. But I am going to find my pencil and I'm just going to measure two and a half there we go. and I'm going to put a little mark at the two and a half mark. And then I'm going to measure three and a half. And I can get several of those trading cards out of this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and measure them all out. So again, I am using my quilting ruler just to make sure I have lots of really good straight edges. And there's all kinds of silly lines all over this thing. So, oh, there it is. Silly me, learn to use a ruler. There's two and a half. And there's two and a half. sure my big head's not in the viewfinder because you don't want to see my big head all right so I have that and I'm just gonna use my craft knife to cut that apart. Yes, I like, oh, I made a big boo-boo. Um, I like to draw my lines first and then cut just so I make sure I can line everything up correctly. That's not going to matter too much. Now if you want these thicker, you can do this and then 
um, put two together, which would kind of be nice, something a little sturdier. Or you can just make a whole bunch of trading cards out of a piece of Cheerios box. So now let's measure that and make sure it is two and a half by two and a half because sometimes I don't measure right. And it's not. And you can't see. And yes, I'm using a quilting cutting mat, again, because it has lots of really good straight lines on it. So I'm just cleaning up the edges, and I'm not going to show you all of the trading cards I'm going to create, I'm just going to do one, that way you get the idea, and then this video is not forever long, because my last video was like almost an hour. Now we have a two and a half by two and a half piece of Cheerios box. And now I am going to coat it in gesso. Not very well organized today, am I? See if I can knock stuff over. I am being a mess. Okay, so I have my gesso, and this is just the, you know, the acrylic gesso that you get at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever, whatever your favorite craft or junk store is. Just coating it all over. Both sides. Again, like I said, you don't have to do this step because you're going to cover it. Um, but I just like to make sure it's got something good to stick to. Um, and with the one side of the Cheerios box being um, a little slick, the, the back side where all the printing is is a little slick, so I like to make sure that I do have something good to adhere or have the glue grab onto. And yes, it's going to warp just a little bit, but we're going to get that back whenever um, we stick stuff to it. So, all right. Just kind of letting that dry just a little bit. Air dry. I guess I could get out my trusty hair dryer, but I just put it away. And so I'm going to be lazy and not. All right. So while that's drying, I am going to take my tape pull from my last video and I'm going to measure out a two and a half by three and a half. Um, rectangle to use for my trading card and this looks about like two and a half um, hey what do you know it's almost perfectly two and a half so I think I'm just gonna cut a sliver off of this just like so So see, we're wasting not our jelly plate imprint and a Cheerios box. Woohoo! All right, so I'm gonna line that up, and you can't see, so I'll line it up here. And again, I'm going to measure it 
This time, because this is a little bit thin, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it without drawing my line. we need to make it three and a half and actually I want the little floor de lee fleur de lee so there's three and a half right there all right so there's our two and a half by three and a half and our gesso is almost dry, so I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back when this is dry so that we can do our next step. Alright, so the gesso is dry and, sorry, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. There we go. The, the gesso is dry, so now we can begin working on making our trading card. And what you're going to need to do is put down some, um, either some glue or um, Mod Podge or something like that. And actually, I just discovered or decided that I wanted two of these because I want the front and the back um, to be similar. So I'm going to cut another piece of this that is two and a half by three and a half so that I'll have a front and a back. Um, and it'll be pretty awesome. So. Let me go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to use my straight edges here as a guide. If I do it that way, it'll probably cut off part of the fleur de lis, but that's two, four, six, and three quarters. Let's see what happens this way. There's three and a half. We'll get most of it, maybe. Yeah, we'll get most of it. Okay, we'll use this side. Was three and a half, so this side needs to be two and a half. So there's two and a half. <clears throat> so now we have two pieces one that looks like this, and one that will look like this. So that looks pretty awesome like the way that's going to turn out. All right, so now I need some Mod Podge. So here's my, my matte Mod Podge from yesterday. And I'm going to need a paintbrush. All right, so I'm just going to Put some Mod Podge on my um, Cheerios box card. Brush that on. I guess I should be doing this on my craft mat. Huh. It'd be a little easier to clean up that way. So I'm just brushing that on, and I don't. It, it doesn't matter which side you put the. Um, first piece on because they're both going to be the same or but different they're both going to have a design on them that's what I'm trying to say 
So I'm just sticking that one down. It looks a little off, so I'm going to try to turn it. There we go. All right. So that side's on. What's happening? It's sliding around. Okay. There we go. So that's on. Now, some of that up. Okay. So now we're going to put some Mod Podge on the other side. And this is where you want to make sure that you're, you decide which is up and which is down. This is going to be up for me because I like that blue across the top. So that's my up. So on this one, I need to decide what my up is. And I like this white part right here. And I want that to be my downside, the bottom. So I'm just going to place that one on there. Now, my measurements weren't exactly right so that's okay so I don't know if you can see but up here because I gessoed the cardboard um, or the box that part doesn't bother me so much because it's showing so it's okay so now I'm just kind of sticking that down and now I want to Mod Podge both sides so that I'm sealing the paper and the tape from the, the um, tape pull down to my little piece of cardboard. And again, like, like my last video, you have to kind of do some squishing to make sure there are no air bubbles. My husband was watching my video and I, when I said yesterday, to Mod Podge the crap out of it, I looked at him and I said, that is a, a true crafter's technical term. He did not believe me. Because whatever you're doing, you want to make sure you do the crap out of it. He didn't find that terribly funny. I did. And I'm sorry, I have a fly or something buzzing around here. do have a fly. It's a tiny little fly. It looks like a fruit fly. Just don't go in the glue. Okay. So now I need to let this dry so I can do the other side. So I'm going to pause the video, dry this side, and I'll be right back. All right, so the first side is pretty dry, so now I'm going to Mod Podge the other side. Put a little Mod Podge on there. Take my brush and just brush that on, make sure, make, making sure, wow, I can't speak. Apparently I've forgotten how to talk. Um, I want to make sure that I get all the edges again because we want to make sure that this does not come up. So I am putting the Mod Podge on the edges again just to make sure we are sealed. Since this is pretty thin, you want to make sure that you don't have any globs on the other side. Like I do. And I stuck my finger in it. 
All right. So now I need to let this dry completely before I go on to the embellishment part, which is the best part, because that's where we get to have lots of creative fun. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll be right back. And through the magic of video camera and recording, this is dry and I am ready to go on to the next set, next step. So what I, sorry, let me get my coffee cup out of your way. That's ridiculous. Although, would you like some coffee? <laughs> um, all right, so I decided that this blue was my top here and this white was my bottom on this side. So keeping that in mind, that's how I'm going to orient my card so that I can decorate it. And what I have here are some things, just some bits and pieces of things. And these were a mistake from my last video. I tried to use these little scrolly things as a stamp and it didn't work out real well. But it pulled some of the paint off. I don't know how well you can see that. Ooh, pretty. Um, so I decided I really, really liked it. And because it's pink and black and it's part of this um, theme from my tape pull, I think I'm gonna use it. And I think that these are just the right size. So I just wanted to decide which one I wanna use. Um, and kind of like that right there. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't hang off the card too much. So that's going to look kind of cool like that. And it gives it some dimension. So I think I'm going to glue that on just like that. And to do that, I have my tacky glue. I'm just going to put that on the back. That should be good. I'm gonna spread it out just a little bit just to make sure I have really good adhesion to the whole thing. And yeah. Just line it up lay it down. The good thing about the uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue is that it dries clear, so if you make a mess, it's fine. Because I have it all over my fingers. So I'm just going to set that on there and smush it down and let it dry. But since I'm going to work on this side, I don't have to worry too much. So the first thing I want to do is um, prepare some of my embellishments because I have these little butterflies. These are mistables. I don't really like them. Um, they are fabric covered chipboard with a sticky back on them, but when you mist them with your um, alcohol inks or tattered angels or whatever you have, the cardboard swells a little bit and the fabric comes up. So unless you care, then I suggest not buying the, I mean, unless you don't care. Um, I don't recommend these. These aren't real great, but you can kind of rough them up so that they have a nice little kind of frayed edge on them, which is kind of cool. Sorry about the fingernails. I have paint and all kinds of gunk on them. All right. So what I decided to do is to take these and use my stickles and make them kind of shiny. So I have a large one and a smaller one. And I'm just roughing up the edges to make it a little distressed. And then I'm going to get out my, this is Stardust Stickles. I love this one. And I'm just going to put some on there. Just kind of scribble it on there. And then with my finger, spread it out so that it's all kinds of shiny. And now it looks like that. Ooh, 
pretty. All right. So I'm going to do the other one. Again, I'm just spreading this out with my finger. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just want it to be sparkly. And there's that one. Can you see? Yeah, there we go. All right, so that is one piece of decoration. I also have, let's see, I have some little birdies from my garden friends. Um, I think these were from Hobby Lobby in the floral department, not in scrapbooking, but they're little wired birds that you can rip the wire off and just use glue them down. So those are fun. I made some art tiles from um, chipboard and that might be kind of fun. This will be another project that I show you uh, how I use stamps and my um, markers to create art tiles. We might even use a tape pull or some tissue paper or something. Um, and then I have these. These were in the, um, I want to say the dollar bin at Michael's. They're just the fall simple things decoration flowers. They're paper. I think I want to use one of these because they're black. Goes well with my pink and black theme. So, hmm. That might be fun. They're a little bit thick, so I may have to squish, which is fine. So you can use that. Uh, I don't know if I like that or not. Hmm. Let's just smash it. Smash it. That looks kind of fun. Hmm. I may have to think about that. I also have these um, Say It In Pearls by Prima. And I'm thinking I may cut some of these out instead of this big flower. I don't know. Let's see what that looks like. What I like about these is they're on a clear film so that you can kind of place your project underneath. That way you can kind of see what you want to do. I don't know. I may take this piece right here. Ooh, I know what I can do. Since I'm gonna use butterflies, I may make this a butterfly trail. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, I also have these um, flat back pearls. And I honestly don't remember. It looks like I may have gotten them at Michael's. Um, but these are in like a turquoise color. And I think they'll look really awesome on those butterflies. And it will also pick up the turquoise or the Atlantis color that I had at the top that I used. So, open these bad boys. And I think in that little butterfly, I'm gonna use one of the larger ones. So I'm just gonna center it, maybe. Squish that down. All right, that looks pretty awesome. Okay, now I have I have a stamp. And yesterday, I think I was telling you about this uh, Tim Holtz stamp that says creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. And I think I want to use that on this card. Um, it'll work sideways. So, let me get out my stays on ink. I'm just making a mess over here. And put that 
just like that. So, can you see? I don't know if you can see that. But it's pretty awesome. And not all the words came out, but that's okay. That's part of its charm. So now what to do on the back? Since I have, I think I'm gonna leave this pretty plain. Um, probably just like that. Because I kinda like that, just plain. Ooh, I know what I can do. Just to jazz it up a little bit. I'm gonna take some more of my flat back pearls and I'm just gonna put three of the smaller ones just going to place them towards the bottom. Probably should close up my ink. Sometimes I get so excited about what I'm doing, I forget to clean up my mess. So there's one. Let's do another one. There's two. three. So now there's my card. Kind of pretty. All right. So now that the front is done, I'm going to look at the back. <clears throat> and because I have this um, scrolly thing on here, I don't want to do a whole lot. But what I could do, since I have the sparkly on the butterfly on the front, I could just outline it in this Stardust Stickles. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh-oh, one of my pearls came off. That's not awesome. These little pearl things. They're hard to pick up too. Okay, so there's no sticky on it, so I'm just going to use some of my stickles since, you know, it's glitter glue. I'm going to put use that to glue it down. You could use um, your tacky glue or <clears throat> your um, Elmer's glue or whatever. I kind of like that. Boy, fumble fingers. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my stickles and I'm just gonna outline it, just to give it some, some sparkle. I love stickles. Ooh, that picks up the blue really well. So I'm just outlining it. Nothing fancy. All right. So now it's got some good shimmer in there and picks up whatever colors are around it. So this part's real blue and that part is really um, kind of purpley. So that's kind of nice. So there's that. And if you wanted to add some ribbon to it, you can add some ribbon. Uh, I think for this one, that would be a little bit too much. Um, so I think I'm just going to leave it pretty much like that. So there is my Waste Not Wednesday artist trading card. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you like the video, make sure that you click like, subscribe to my channel, and you can also visit me at my Etsy store at BB's Butterfly, and we'll see you next time. Bye!